Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Sorcery Jokers. Okay. Um, uh, this day it is, right now, a kind of doubt. There were, there were no classes at the academy the next morning. Wow, the first sentence I had to, you know, say, and it was grammatically incorrect because then it just messed up my brain. Anyways, but since I had to go in for questioning anyway, I woke up the same time as normal and had breakfast with Dad. You're welcome. No. What is it? Does my omelet rice taste bad? What? Oh, of course I can't. It's not finished at a dish until you write your name on it. I'm pretty sure writing your name on omelette rice is a rule regardless of whether you're an adult or a kid. Dad grabbed the coat draped over his chair. I know, I just have to tell them everything I told you, alright? We need to follow the rules. A detective's son can't just not cooperate with the investigation. What if I just, you know, I've written it down, you know, on a piece of paper? You know, make a photocopy of it? You know, it would have been easier, right? I followed Dad as he headed for the front door, sighing as he went. In the interrogra interrogra interrogation room. Oh boy. Okay. Alright. Interrogation room. At the police station, I honestly gave them the gist of what had happened as I'd promised my dad I would. There seemed to be no discrepancies with the police's side of the story, so they let me go after 30 minutes or so. I tried asking them about Akatsuki, but they wouldn't tell me anything. I don't know what'll happen to him yet, but at least it looks like his injuries weren't severe enough for him to be hospitalized. I told the police everything I'd seen and heard last night. But there was just one piece of unclear information I had opened up about, or I hadn't. The truth behind that mask. Ah yes, the view, the view is perfect! Mwah. I had an idea who the voice I'd heard belonged to. Hmm. Of course, I could just be thinking too hard about it. In the first place, it's hard for me to imagine that Riku-chan could be the collector. I couldn't get Riku-chan in trouble if I wasn't sure about it myself, so I didn't tell the police or my dad about it. But no matter how many times I told myself I had to be wrong, I couldn't shake off my suspicions. Alright, I'll just go ask her. I'm not going to come to any conclusions just thinking about this. When you're unsure, you have to ask. But now that I've des uh, decided that, what should I ask? actually ask her? Hey, are you the collector, Riku-chan? Hmm? Would that be too straightforward? Maybe I should try to bring up the subject more casually. The sky's a pretty blue today, huh? Anyway, I wonder who the collector really is. Hmm, I don't think that's quite right either. Anyway, is doing all the work in that sentence too. Anyway, anyway, 
don't see any way of that working out. When I imagined Riku-chan's cold glare, I suddenly felt the temperature drop around me and my spine froze. Oh, but is there any way I can see Riku-chan in the first place? We don't have classes today. There is a more fundamental problem that needs to be addressed before I can even think about how to bring it up with her. We're not in the kind of relationship where we can simply meet up in private. No matter how many times I simulate a conversation, it's not going to work if I can't create an opportunity to talk to her. Well, we've got the day off. Maybe if I wander around town, I'll find her. Yeah, with no direction, let's just wander. I looked around me to find a large amount of people coming and going. I wasn't really hoping to conveniently find Riku-chan among the crowd, so it was just a coincidence that my eyes met with someone in that throng. <gasps> Asahi? We recognized each other at pretty much the same moment. Asahi was the one who started moving, dashing toward me. I braced myself for an impact when I saw how fast she was going, but she hit the brakes just before she would have crashed into me. Woo! That, that's, yeah, that's good, girl. Don't just run into me. What, what are you in such a hurry for? He wouldn't be so out of breath just from running over, so I could imagine what sort of a situation she'd been in before finding me. There was a faint layer of sweat glinting on her forehead as well. <laughs> Sorry, why don't you take a minute to catch your breath actually? Come on, in and out! There we go. Also, here's my handkerchief. Why don't you wipe your forehead with it? I got it. Pardon me, then. I parted Asahi's bangs to wipe her forehead off, exposing her snow-white skin. I lightly dabbed at her sweat with the handkerchief. Aww. Alright, raise your head now. I'll do your neck. There we go, feel better. So you said you were looking for him? You had to question me about the trouble yesterday. Why were you looking for me at Asahi? Save me? Asahi said it like it was the most natural thing in the world. Danger, huh? There's that word. I wonder how saving me relates to Asahi's goal. Wait, wait a second. I tried to calm Asahi down when she took my hand and started pulling me behind her. You can't just tell me that out of the blue. At least tell me why you're doing this. Even as I talked to Asahi like this, I'd already checked. Decided where I was headed to next. My one clue to Riku-chan's whereabouts was a Tori, so I was planning on heading to their headquarters and seeing if I could find some way of contacting her. It's not as if Riku-chan lives there, but I, if, you know, but if someone can point me in the direction, the right one, I'll be set. The question is whether or not I can get the answers I'm looking for just barging in there, but I've got no choice but to try since I don't have any other ideas. However, just when I was thinking that, another problem had arisen, and that was what was happening in front of me right now. I've got something to do first, but I'll do what you say as soon as I'm finished. 
I can't really give you the details, and since you can't tell me your reasons either, that makes us even, right? I'll be back as soon as I'm done, okay? I'll see you. I ran off without waiting for a response from her. I'm sorry, Asahi, but I just need to know. Agartha's an island that was expanded beyond its original territory. Each di district is connected by major roads and bridges. If you look at things that way, then this area with all the skyscrapers would sort of be the original Agartha. It's in the center of the island, so it's very convenient to get to and, and all of the important facilities like government buildings can be found here. Makes sense that such a large company would have its office here. I slipped in with all the employees wearing business suits and explained my circumstances to the lady at the reception desk. To report my results, despite my fervent attempts at negotiation, I was fruitlessly turned away. It wasn't too surprising. Such a huge company wouldn't be so lax with security that they'd agree to arrange a meeting with the CEO's daughter for some random student who didn't even have an appointment. No matter how thoroughly I tried to prove my identity, she'd stuck with, I'm sorry, I can't help. Ah, <sighs> what do I do now? Well, I am going to end the episode here, everybody, for Sorcery Jokers. I do apologize for the misreading and all of that. I just, um, I just ate and all that, all that blood brain flow, like, uh, into the brain and then the stomach, they're not connecting with each other correctly. But in the, in the next episode, that, that will, uh, be much, much better. But anyways, thank you everybody for watching this video. Let me know what you guys think is going on and if he is able to get to her. So if you guys enjoyed this video, then please smash that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. And don't forget to ring the little bell too to get notifications of my uploads. Thank you everybody for watching this episode and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye!